Hello guys and welcome to TechWolf. If you find this video useful or entertaining, please consider subscribing and liking this video. And now let's get into it. Hello and welcome back to TechWolf. In this video we will be going through 50 questions and most of these questions will be related to CompTIA Plus Core 1 hardware. As hardware is one of the biggest topics on CompTIA Plus Core 1 test. So no further ado guys and let's get into it first question is a user is attempting to install a new application but receives an error stating insufficient privileges what is the most likely solution update the application run as administrator reinstall the operating system replace the hard drive or disable antivirus software and correct answer here is run as administrator running the application as administrator grants the necessary privileges to install it as reinstalling the operating system is not necessary for this issue a hard drive replacement is irrelevant here and updating the application wouldn't resolve permissions issue and disabling antivirus software is unlikely to help in this scenario next question is a user notices their laptop battery is not charging even though it is plugged in what is the most likely issue corrupted operating system overheating cpu or central processing unit low battery health faulty charging cable or incorrect drivers and here the correct answer is faulty charging cable as faulty charging cable is common cause of a laptop not charging a corrupt operating system wouldn't directly affect charging a low battery health wouldn't affect the battery's lifespan but it should still charge an overheating cpu could cause performance issues but wouldn't affect charging incorrect drivers wouldn't affect battery charging next question is a user reports their computer randomly freezes during use which of the following is the most likely cause overheating gpu insufficient ram low disk space weak wi-fi signal or corrupted operating system and correct answer here is overheating gpu as an overheating gpu can cause system freezes and crashes especially during graphic intensive tasks a weak wi-fi signal wouldn't affect network connectivity and will not cause the system to freeze insufficient ram wouldn't cause slow performance and not necessarily freezing low disk space typically causes performance issues but not freezing a corrupted operating system might cause crashes but overheating hardware is more common for freezes next question is a user reports that their wireless mouse is not working what is the most likely solution reinstall the wireless driver update the operating system adjust the screen resolution replace the batteries or replace the mouse the correct answer here is replace the batteries as dead or weak batteries in wireless mouse are the most common cause of it not working replacing the mouse is only necessary if it's confirmed faulty updating the operating system is unnecessary for a mouse issue screen resolution adjustments wouldn't affect the mouse and reinstalling the driver is only necessary if there is a driver issue but dead batteries are more likely a technician is installing new ssd in a desktop but the system does not affect the drive what is the most likely cause loose power connection incorrect ram size failed cpu corrupted operating system or faulty monitor the correct answer here is loose power connection a loose power connection to the ssd would prevent it from being detected by the system a corrupted operating system would not prevent hardware detection in the bios incorrect ram would affect system performance not drive detection a failed cpu would prevent the entire system from functioning and faulty monitor affects display not drive detection question number six a user is unable to access the internet but other devices on the same network work fine what is the most likely cause incorrect network settings corrupted operating system outdated browser faulty ram or isp outage 
and correct answer here is in correct network settings as in correct network settings on the user's device could prevent internet access if other devices are working the isp is not the issue a corrupted operating system would cause broader issues not just network problems faulty ram would cause system instability not just network access issues and an outdated browser might cause website issues but not total network access failure Question number seven, a user is experiencing low frame rates while gaming. What is the most likely cause? Failing hard drive, low disk space, bad Wi-Fi signal, underpowered GPU, incorrect display resolution. And correct answer here is underpowered GPU. And an underpowered GPU will struggle to render games at a high frame rates. Display resolution may affect performance but is not the root cause of low frame rates. Low disk space affects system performance, not gaming frame rates. Wi-Fi signal strength does not affect graphic performance in offline gaming. And a failing hard drive would cause broader system issues than just a low frame rates. Next question. After setting up a new desktop, a user reports that the system is making a beep sounds but does not boot. What is the most likely issue? Faulty RAM, low disk space, corrupted operating system, bad Ethernet cable, incorrect display settings. And correct answer here is faulty RAM. As beeping sounds during boot often indicate a RAM issue. Display settings wouldn't prevent booting or cause beeping. A corrupted operating system would display errors but not beep. Low disk space wouldn't prevent the system from booting. An Ethernet cable is unrelated to the boot process. Next question. A technician installs a new sound card in desktop. But no sound is coming from the speakers. What is the most likely cause? Corrupted operating system, sound card drivers not installed, bad speaker connection, incompatible RAM, faulty power supply. And correct answer here is sound card drivers not installed. As without the correct sound card drivers, the system will not output audio. A faulty power supply would cause broader issues than just audio. A corrupted operating system would affect more than just sound. A bad speaker connection might be the issue, but drivers are more likely after new hardware installation. Incompatible RAM would cause system instability, but not audio issues. Question number 10. A user installs new software and afterward the computer keeps crashing. What is the most likely cause? Weak Wi-Fi signal. Loose RAM. Faulty hard drive. Bad GPU. Software compatibility issues. And correct answer here is software compatibility issues. As compatibility issues with newly installed software can cause system instability and crashes. A faulty hard drive would cause boot issues or data loss, not necessarily crashes after software installation. A bad GPU would affect graphics, not general system crashes. Loose RAM would prevent the system from booting or cause the other issues, but it wouldn't be directly related to the software installation, and weak Wi-Fi wouldn't cause system crashes. Question number 11. A technician notices that PC is making loud noise, and the fan speed is very high. What is the most likely cause? Loose cables? Failed power supply? overheating components, bad RAM or corrupted BIOS. And correct answer here is overheating components. As high fan speed and noise are typically a response to overheating components. Loose cables might cause system instability, but they wouldn't cause loud fan noise. A corrupted BIOS would cause boot issues, not high fan speeds. A failed power supply caused the system to shut down, not increase fan activity. And bad RAM would cause crashes or boot failures, not loud fan noise. And question number 12. 
a technician is replacing a failed hard drive in laptop. After installing a new hard drive, what is the next step? Install more RAM, reset the CMOS, update the BIOS, reinstall the operating system, or reconnect the Wi-Fi card. And the correct answer here is reinstall the operating system. After replacing the hard drive, the operating system needs to be reinstalled. Updating the BIOS is not necessary after hard drive replacement, and the Wi-Fi card would not have been disconnected during this process. Installing more RAM is unrelated to hard drive replacement, and resetting the CMOS is unnecessary unless there are BIOS issues. And next question, a user's monitor displays no signal. Even though the computer is turned on, what is the most likely issue? Outdated drivers, faulty CPU, bad network card, corrupted operating system, loose video cable. And correct answer here is loose video cable, as loose video cable would prevent the monitor from receiving a signal. A corrupted operating system would affect booting but wouldn't cause a no signal message. A bad network card would affect internet connectivity, not the monitor display. And faulty CPU would prevent the system from powering on. And outdated drivers would affect performance but wouldn't cause the no signal error. Next question is, a user complains that their computer is running very slow. What is the most likely cause? Loose power cable, incorrect BIOS settings, insufficient RAM, faulty monitor, or bad network card? The correct answer here is insufficient RAM. As insufficient RAM can cause the computer to run slowly due to a lack of memory. A faulty monitor would affect display, not performance. A bad network card would affect internet connectivity, not overall speed. A loose power cable would prevent the computer from turning on, and incorrect BIOS settings might cause boot issues, but not necessarily slow performance. So, next question is question 15, and a user's computer is not connecting to the Wi-Fi network. What is the most likely issue? Faulty hard drive, loose video cable, disabled Wi-Fi adapter, corrupted operating system or bad RAM? And correct answer here is disabled Wi-Fi adapter, as disabled Wi-Fi adapter would prevent the computer from connecting to the Wi-Fi. A faulty hard drive would affect storage, not Wi-Fi connectivity. A loose video cable would affect display, not a Wi-Fi. A corrupted operating system might cause various issues, but not specifically Wi-Fi connectivity. A bad RAM would affect performance, not Wi-Fi connectivity. A user reports that their printer is printing blank pages. What is the most likely cause? Faulty monitor, empty ink cartridge, corrupted operating system, bad network card, and loose power cable. When in your CompTIA Plus exam you have questions like these, I would highly recommend you to go through all answers and think about those answers which doesn't relate to the question which have been asked and ignore those answers which you think that are most unrelated to this particular question which is asked because you will have many tricky questions like this on CompTIA A plus exam and leave only those answers which are most related to the question which have been asked as that will be the most probable answer to that particular question. And here correct answer is empty ink cartridge. An empty ink cartridge would result in blank pages being printed. A bad network card would affect connectivity, not printing. A loose power cable would prevent the printer from turning on. A faulty monitor would affect display, not printing. A corrupted operating system might cause various issues, but not specifically blank pages. A user computer is not booting up. What is the most likely cause? Faulty power supply, loose video cable, Corrupted operating system, bad network card, outdated drivers. And correct answer here is faulty power supply. 
as faulty power supply would prevent the computer from booting up. A bad network card would affect connectivity, not booting. A loose video cable would affect display, not booting. A corrupted operating system might cause boot issues, but not necessarily prevent booting. And outdated drivers would affect performance, but not prevent booting. Question number 18. A technician is installing a new hard drive and wants to ensure that it boots properly. Which steps should be done first? Partition the hard drive. Set the drive as a primary boot device in BIOS, format the hard drive, check for malware, or install the operating system. The correct answer here is set the drive as a primary boot device in BIOS. The system needs to boot from the correct device and setting the hard drives as the primary boot device in the BIOS ensures this. Installing the operating system is necessary, but the BIOS boot order comes first. Formatting comes after the drive is recognized as the boot device. Partitioning is required but happens later in the process. And checking for malware is irrelevant to drive installation. And question number 19. A user is reporting poor Wi-Fi connectivity in their home. What should the technician check first? BIOS settings, ISP account status, printer connection, Ethernet cable, or router placement. Router placement. As router placement is crucial for ensuring a strong Wi-Fi signal. An Ethernet cable is not relevant for Wi-Fi. ISP or Internet Service Provider account status could affect the service but not signal strength specifically. BIOS settings don't affect Wi-Fi connectivity and the printer connection is unrelated to the Wi-Fi signal. A user cannot access certain websites but can access others. What is the most likely cause? Damaged network cable, faulty RAM, low disk space, DNS issues or failed hard drive? And correct answer here is DNS issues. As DNS issues can cause a user to fail to access specific websites. A failed hard drive would prevent the system from the functioning. Faulty RAM would lead to system instability, not selective website issues. Low disk space would slow the system but not cause this issue. A damaged network cable would affect all internet access, not just some websites. And question number 21. A technician is installing GPU in a gaming PC or graphical processing unit or video card and what must be considered before installation. Wi-Fi card installation, printer compatibility, power supply wattage, USB port compatibility or screen resolution. And correct answer here is power supply wattage. The power supply must be adequate to support the power requirements of the new GPU. USB ports are irrelevant to the GPU installation. Screen resolution is an output of the GPU but isn't critical during the installation. Printers are unrelated to the GPU installations and the Wi-Fi card is not connected when installing a GPU. A laptop is running but the screen remains blank after boot. What is the most likely cause? Faulty display cable, failed hard drive, bad RAM, overheating CPU or incorrect boot sequence. And correct answer here is faulty display cable. A faulty display cable would prevent the screen from showing anything even if the system is running. A bad RAM would prevent the system from booting altogether. A failed hard drive would still allow the BIOS to display. And an incorrect boot sequence would show an error message, not a blank screen. An overheating CPU would cause shutdown, not a blank screen. A user cannot connect to the network with an Ethernet cable. But Wi-Fi works fine. What is the most likely issue? Outdated BIOS. Low disk space faulty network card, bad Ethernet cable, or incorrect IP settings. And correct answer here is incorrect IP settings. 
as in correct IP settings could prevent a wired connection while Wi-Fi still works. If the network card were faulty, neither Ethernet nor Wi-Fi would work. A bad Ethernet cable would prevent any connection at all and the BIOS is not relevant to network connectivity and low disk space wouldn't affect network connection. A user is experiencing frequent blue screens on their desktop. Which of the following is the most likely cause? Overheating CPU, corrupted browser, full hard drive, weak Wi-Fi signal, incorrect display settings. And correct answer here is overheating CPU. As overheating can cause system instability and frequent blue screens. A corrupted browser would cause web issues, not system crashes. A full hard drive could slow the system but wouldn't lead to blue screens. Display settings would not cause system crashes. And Wi-Fi signal issues do not cause blue screens. After installing a new monitor, the display is very dim. What should the technician check first? Display cable connection. Monitor brightness settings. Graphics card, power supply or operating system. And correct answer here is monitor brightness settings. As brightness settings should be checked first if the display is dim. The power supply would affect the entire system not just the monitor's brightness. A loose cable could cause no display, not a dim one. The operating system wouldn't cause a dim display issue. And the graphics card affects display output but wouldn't likely cause dimness alone. A user connects a new printer to their computer but it does not appear in the printer list. What should be checked first? Display resolution, power supply, BIOS settings, printer drivers, or RAM configuration? The correct answer here is printer drivers. Installing the proper drivers ensures the printer will be recognized by the system. Display resolution is unrelated to printer functionality and BIOS settings don't affect printer installation. And the power supply wouldn't prevent printer from being detected. And RAM configuration is unrelated to printers. A technician is upgrading a user's laptop RAM. After installation, the laptop fails to boot. What is the most likely cause? Faulty screen, outdated drivers, bad power supply, corrupted hard drive or incompatible RAM. And the correct answer here is incompatible RAM. If the RAM is incompatible, the system will not boot properly. A corrupted hard drive would allow the system to reach the BIOS. A bad power supply would prevent the laptop from powering on at all. A faulty screen wouldn't stop the system from booting. And outdated drivers would cause issues after boot, not prevent it. A technician installs a new SSD in a laptop. But it is not recognized by the system. What should be checked first? Display settings, printer drivers, firewall settings, BIOS password or SATA cable connection. And the correct answer here is SATA cable connection. A SATA cable must be properly connected for the SSD to be recognized. Display settings are irrelevant to storage drives. Printer drivers wouldn't affect the an SSD installation. Firewall settings do not affect SSD detection. And the BIOS password does not prevent hardware detection. And question number 29. A technician is troubleshooting a desktop that randomly shuts down. Which of the following is the most likely cause? Full hard drive. Outdated display drivers. Overheating CPU incorrect boot order or bad printer connection and correct answer here is overheating cpu an overheating cpu can cause random shutdowns to protect the system outdated display drivers would cause display issues not shutdowns printer connection issues wouldn't cause system shutdowns and boot order affects startup not shutdown a full hard drive would slow performance but not cause shutdowns. Question 30. A user cannot connect to the internet. 
but other devices on the network work fine. What should the technician check first? CPU temperature, sound settings, display drivers, network adapter settings or printer connection. And correct answer here is network adapter settings. Incorrect network adapter settings can prevent the internet access on one device. Display drivers affect video output, not network connectivity. Printer connection is unrelated to internet access and CPU temperature doesn't affect internet connectivity. Sound settings are irrelevant to this issue. Question 31. A user connects an external monitor to their laptop, but the display is blank. What should the technician check first? Display settings on the laptop, printer connection, BIOS settings, hard drive status or power supply. And correct answer here is display settings on the laptop. The laptop display settings may need to be configured to extend or mirror the screen. And BIOS settings are unlikely to affect external display functionality. The power supply wouldn't affect external monitor display unless the laptop isn't powering up at all. And hard drive status is unrelated to display output. The printer connection is also irrelevant to monitor output. And question 32. A technician replaces laptop battery, but the system still does not hold a charge. What is the most likely cause? Incorrect RAM, outdated operating system, incompatible screen, malware infection or faulty power adapter. And the correct answer here is faulty power adapter. A faulty power adapter could prevent the laptop from charging properly even with a new battery. RAM wouldn't affect battery performance and the operating system version doesn't affect battery charging. Malware doesn't directly influence battery charging issues and screen is unrelated to the charging problems. A desktop PC shows a no boot device found after being moved to a new location. What is the most likely cause? Overheating CPU, incorrect screen resolution, loose SATA cable, outdated graphics card, or missing printer drivers. And correct answer here is loose SATA cable. The SATA cable may have come loose during the move, preventing the hard drive from being detected. The screen resolution doesn't affect the boot process and printer drivers are unrelated to the boot devices. Overheating could cause a shutdown but not this error. The graphics card wouldn't cause a no boot device error. And question 34. A laptop keyboard is unresponsive, but an external USB keyboard works fine. What is the most likely cause? A corrupted operating system, bad RAM, BIOS misconfiguration, faulty laptop keyboard or malware infection. And the correct answer here is faulty laptop keyboard. If an external keyboard works, but the built-in one does not, the laptop keyboard is likely faulty. A corrupted operating system would affect all input devices, not just the laptop keyboard. And bad RAM would cause more general system instability. And BIOS settings would affect both keyboards, where the malware wouldn't affect only the laptop keyboard. And question number 35. A user reports that their desktop fan is extremely loud, even when the system is idle. What should the technician check first? CPU temperature, faulty hard drive, network settings, display drivers or loose cables. And correct answer here is CPU temperature. A high CPU temperature can cause the fan to run at high speeds to cool the system. A faulty hard drive would cause the performance issues, not fan noise. Loose cables wouldn't typically cause fan noise and display drivers don't affect fan behavior. Network settings are unrelated to the system cooling. And question number 36. A desktop computer is not powering on. The power cable is plugged in and the power outlet is working. What is the most likely issue? A corrupted BIOS, insufficient RAM, faulty power supply, outdated drivers or bad hard drive. 
And correct answer here is faulty power supply. A faulty power supply would prevent the computer from turning on. Corrupted BIOS would prevent booting but not power on. Drivers only affect the system after it's booted. A bad hard drive wouldn't stop the system from powering on. An efficient RAM would cause errors but wouldn't prevent the system from powering on. And question number 37. A user is unable to connect their Bluetooth headset to a laptop. What should the technician check first? Ethernet connection. Bluetooth is enabled on the laptop. Network drivers. Hard drive status and USB ports. The correct answer here is Bluetooth is enabled on the laptop. Ensuring Bluetooth is enabled in the first step in the troubleshooting Bluetooth device connections. Network drivers are for wired wireless internet, not Bluetooth. Hard drive status is irrelevant to Bluetooth functionality. USB ports are unrelated to Bluetooth connectivity and Bluetooth devices don't require Ethernet. And question 38. A laptop has an intermittent connection when connected to Wi-Fi. What is the most likely cause? Incorrect BIOS configuration. Faulty keyboard. Full hard drive. Weak Wi-Fi signal. Or bad display drivers. And the correct answer here is weak Wi-Fi signal. A weak Wi-Fi signal can cause intermittent connection issues. Display drivers affect video output, not Wi-Fi connectivity. And BIOS settings wouldn't cause intermittent connection issues. A full hard drive would slow down the system but wouldn't affect Wi-Fi. A faulty keyboard doesn't affect network connectivity. And question 39. A user reports their laptop battery drains very quickly. What should be checked first? Power settings, BIOS version, display resolution, audio drivers or network drivers. The correct answer here is you should check power settings. Adjusting power settings can help conserve battery life by reducing power consumption. Display resolution does affect power consumption but should not be the first thing checked. Network drivers don't affect battery life significantly. Audio drivers have little impact on battery life. And BIOS version is not likely related to battery drain. And question number 40. A technician installs a second RAM module in desktop but the system fails to boot. What is the most likely issue? Corrupted hard drive. Outdated drivers. Incompatible RAM. Incorrect CPU settings. Or faulty power supply. And the correct answer here is incompatible RAM. As incompatible RAM can prevent the system from booting properly. A faulty power supply would prevent the system from powering on at all and corrupted hard drive wouldn't affect booting in this manner. Incorrect CPU settings wouldn't cause this specific issue and drivers are irrelevant during the boot process. A technician needs to replace broken display on laptop. What is the most important consideration before proceeding? Power off the laptop, disable Wi-Fi, reinstall the operating system, upgrade the CPU or remove the hard drive. And here the answer is power off the laptop. Powering off the laptop ensures safety when replacing hardware like a display. Reinstalling the operating system is unnecessary for a display replacement. And upgrading the CPU is unrelated to display replacement. And removing the hard drive is not necessary for this task. And disabling Wi-Fi is irrelevant to hardware replacement. And question number 42. A user is experiencing poor sound quality from their desktop speakers. What should the technician check first? RAM capacity, monitor resolution, audio cable connection, CPU temperature or BIOS version. 
And the correct answer here is audio cable connection. A loose or improperly connected audio cable can result in poor sound quality. And BIOS version do not affect sound quality. And monitor resolution has no relation to audio output. A CPU temperature affects performance but not sound quality. A RAM capacity impacts system performance, not audio quality. And question number 43 is a technician installs a new wireless adapter in desktop, but the system does not detect it. What should be checked first? BIOS password, printer status, wireless adapter drivers, CPU performance or display settings. The correct answer here is wireless adapter drivers. Installing the correct drivers is crucial for the system to detect new hardware like a wireless adapter. And display settings have no effect on wireless adapters. CPU performance does not affect wireless detection or printer status is unrelated to the wireless adapter. A BIOS password would not prevent hardware detection. A user's laptop is running slower than usual after updating the operating system. What should the technician check first? Printer drivers, available disk space, display resolution, monitor settings or Ethernet cable. A correct answer here is available disk space. A lack of disk space can cause the system to slow down, especially after large updates. Display resolution wouldn't affect overall system speed. Ethernet cables are irrelevant to the system performance and printer drivers would affect printing, not overall performance. Monitor settings have no effect on the system speed. And question number 45. A desktop is randomly freezing and restarting. What is the most likely cause? Low Wi-Fi signal, printer drivers, full hard drive, incorrect display resolution, overheating CPU. The correct answer here is overheating CPU. Overheating can cause random freezes and restarts as the system tries to cool down. Printer drivers would not cause the system instability and display resolution wouldn't result in system freezing. A low Wi-Fi signal affects connectivity, not system stability. A full hard drive would slow the system, but not cause restarts. And question number 46. A technician is replacing the motherboard in a desktop. What is the most important consideration before doing so? Install new drivers. Updating the operating system. Disable Wi-Fi. Power off and unplug the system. Replace the CPU. The correct answer here is power off and unplug the system. The system must be powered off and unplugged to safely replace a motherboard. New drivers are installed after the motherboard is replaced. The CPU is not always replaced with the motherboard. And disabling Wi-Fi is unnecessary for motherboard replacement. And updating the operating system is not related to motherboard installation. Next question. A user laptop is not charging even though it is plugged in. What should the technician check first? Power adapter. Display settings. Network drivers. RAM configuration or BIOS settings? A correct answer here is power adapter. A faulty power adapter is common cause of a laptop not charging. Display settings wouldn't affect charging and network drivers are unrelated to battery charging and BIOS settings are unlikely to cause this issue. A RAM configuration doesn't affect battery charging at all. And next question, a technician installs a new SSD in a desktop, but the drive is not showing up in the operating system. What should they check first? Graphics card drivers, audio output, BIOS update, monitor settings or SATA cable connection. And the correct answer here is SATA cable connection. Ensuring the SATA cable is properly connected is the first step in troubleshooting why the SSD isn't being recognized. A graphics card drivers do not affect drive detection. Monitor 
settings are unrelated to storage devices. A BIOS update might help, but checking connection is the first step. Audio settings have no bearing on drive recognition. A desktop computer is powering on but not displaying anything on the monitor. What should the technician check first? Printer drivers, RAM capacity, monitor power cable, CPU fan, or keyboard connection and correct answer here is monitor power cable if the monitor power cable is not connected or faulty the screen will remain blank printer drivers are irrelevant to display issues the cpu fan is essential for cooling but unrelated to the display issues insufficient ram would cause performance issues but would not prevent the display from working a keyboard connection does not affect the monitor's functionality at all a user reports that their wireless mouse has stopped working what is the first thing the technician should check and here the answers of the questions are as follows BIOS settings USB keyboard connection mouse drivers battery level of the mouse and network connection and the correct answer here is battery level of the mouse a dead battery is the most common cause of a wireless mouse not working which of the following is an example of solid-state storage device blu-ray disk hard disk drive usb flash drive cd rom and correct answer is usb flash drive usb flash drive is a solid state storage device because it uses flash memory to store data unlike hard drives or optical disks which uses mechanical parts or laser technology next question is which of the following cable types is used to connect a computer to a wireless router vga USB, HDMI and Ethernet cable and correct answer is Ethernet cable. An Ethernet cable is used to connect a computer to wireless router for wired network connections. Question 3. Which of the following motherboard form factors is the most commonly used in desktop computers? Mini ITX, Micro ATX, Nano ITX or ATX? And the correct answer is ATX. ATX is the most commonly used motherboard form factor in desktop computers due to its size and expandability options. And next question, which of the following is the minimum number of drives required for a RAID 5 array? 5, 3, 2 or 4? And here correct answer is 3. RAID 5 requires a minimum of 3 drives to distribute parity and data across all drives, providing fault tolerance. And question number 5 is, which of the following is primary purpose of DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol? Monitoring network traffic, encrypting data, assigning IP addresses to devices on a network, managing domain names. And correct answer is assigning IP addresses to devices on a network. DHCP automatically assigns IP addresses to devices on a network, simplifying network management. And question number 6. Which of the following is the maximum transfer speed of USB 3? 10 GB, 480 MB per second, 1 GB per second or 5 GB per second? And correct answer is 5 GB per second. USB 3 supports maximum transfer speed of 5 GB per second, significantly faster than USB 2.0. Question number 7. Which of the following is an example of expansion card? Graphics card, CPU, SSD or RAM? And correct answer here is graphics card. A graphics card is an expansion card that enhances the computer's ability to render graphics. And question number 8 is which of the following protocols is used for secure communication over the internet? SMTP, HTTP, FTP, SSL, TLS. And correct answer here is SSL TLS. SSL and TLS protocols are used to secure communications over the internet by encrypting data. And question number 9. Which of the following is characteristic of multi-core processor? 
increased power consumption, higher clock speed, improved energy efficiency and single threaded performance. And correct answer here is improved energy efficiency. Multi-core processors improved energy efficiency by distributing tasks across multiple cores, reducing the workload on each core. And question number 10. Which of the following tools is used to measure electrical voltage? Pliers, screwdriver, multimeter or wire stripper? And the correct answer is multimeter. As multimeter is a tool used to measure el electrical voltage, current and resistance. Question number 11. Which of the following is common use for a KVM switch? Connecting multiple computers to one keyboard, monitor and mouse. Connecting multiple printers to one computer. Connecting multiple USB devices to one computer or connecting multiple monitors to one computer. And correct answer here is connecting multiple computers to one keyboard, monitor and mouse. And here from KVM, if you didn't know this, then K stands for keyboard and M, this, is, this stands for mouse. A KVM keyboard video mouse switch allows you to control multiple computers using a single keyboard monitor and mouse. Question number 12 is which of the following is the primary function of a power supply unit PSU in a computer to process data, to store data, to provide power to the computer components or manage network connections. And correct answer here is to provide power to computer components. The PSU converts electrical power from an outlet into a usable power for the computer's internal components. And question number 13 is which of the following is a characteristic of DDR4 RAM compared to DDR3 RAM? Higher data transfer rate, lower latency, lower data transfer rate, higher power consumption. And here the correct answer is higher data transfer rate. And DDR4 RAM has a higher data transfer rate compared to DDR3, allowing for faster performance. And let's continue. Which of the following is used to cool a CPU? Network card, power supply, hard drive, heatsink and fan. Obviously, logical answer is heatsink and fan. A heatsink and fan are commonly used to dissipate heat from the CPU, preventing it from overheating. And question number 15, which of the following is a common file system used by Windows operating system? NTFS, EXT4, FAT32 or NFS Plus? And here, correct answer is NTFS. Submit NTF's new technology file system is a default file system used by Windows operating system for its advanced features and security. Here you can remember easily it by new technology file system NTFS. If it comes to Microsoft, you can think of that Microsoft is using everything what is kind of new. And that's how I remembered this question for my exams. Which of the following is an example of an input device? Printer, monitor, keyboard or speaker? And here correct answer is keyboard. As keyboard is an input device used to enter data into a computer. Question number 17. Which of the following is the purpose of thermal paste in a computer? So, what thermal paste is used for in a PC? To insulate electrical components, to secure the CPU to connect motherboard, to prevent dust buildup, to improve heat transfer between the CPU and heat sink. And correct answer here is to improve the heat transfer between the CPU and heat sink. As thermal paste improves heat transfer between the CPU and the heat sink, ensuring efficient cooling. Question 18. Which of the following is a common use for NAS device? Managing network traffic, running virtual machines, 
hosting websites or storing and sharing files over network. And here correct answer is storing and sharing files over a network. A NAS device is used to store and share files over a network providing centralized data storage. And next question which of the following is characteristics of an SSD compared to an HDD. Larger physical size, higher power consumption, slower data access speed, faster data access speed. So here logically faster data access speed. Question 20. Which of the following is the purpose of a post? Power on self test. To configure the BIOS settings, to load the operating system, to check the hardware components for errors, to update the firmware. The correct answer is to check the hardware components for errors. POST is a diagnostic test that checks the hardware components of a computer for errors before loading the operating system. Question number 21. Which of the following is common use for VPN virtual private network? Encrypting email messages, managing network traffic, blocking malware, Securing internet connections over public networks. And correct answer is securing internet connections over public networks. As a VPN secures internet connections over public networks by encrypting data, ensuring privacy and security. And question 22. Which of the following is characteristics of UEFI? Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. Compared to BIOS. So, which of the following is the characteristics of UEFI? No graphical interface, supports larger hard drives, limited to 16-bit mode, or limited to 2TB hard drives. And here correct answer is supports larger hard drives. UEFI supports larger hard drives over 2TB and provides a graphical interface unlike the traditional BIOS. Question number 23. Which of the following is the primary purpose of a firewall? Monitoring network traffic, encrypting data, blocking unauthorized access to a network, or managing IP addresses. And the correct answer is blocking unauthorized access to a network. As firewall blocks unauthorized access to a network, protecting it from potential threats. Question number 24 is which of the following is a common use for a hypervisor? Managing network traffic, storing files, running multiple operating systems on a single physical machine, or for encrypting data. And here, hypervisor is always responsible for running multiple operating systems on a single physical machine. Hypervisor allows multiple operating systems to run on a single physical machine by creating and managing virtual machines. And question number 25. Which of the following is a characteristic of a cloud computing? Requires physical hardware on site provides on-demand access to computing resources, requires manual updates, limited to local network access. And here correct answer is provides on-demand access to computing resources. As cloud computing provides on-demand access to computing resources over the internet, eliminating the need for physical hardware on site. Question number 26. Which of the following is common use for a proxy server. Catching web content to improve access speed, blocking malware, managing IP addresses or encrypting data. And here correct answer is caching web content to improve access speed. At proxy server caches web content to improve access speed and reduce bandwidth usage. Question number 27. Which of the following is a characteristics of an IPv6 address compared to an IPv4 address. Longer address lengths, limited to 32 bits, limited to 128 bits, shorter address lengths. And here correct answer is longer address lengths. 
and IPv6 addresses are 228 bits long, providing a larger address space compared to the 32-bit IPv4 addresses. Question 28. Which of the following is the primary purpose of DNS domain name system server? Blocking malware, encrypting data, translating domain names into IP addresses, managing network traffic. And here correct answer is translating domain names into IP addresses. DNS server translates domain names into IP addresses allowing users to access websites using human readable names. And question number 29. Which of the following is the characteristics of a laser printer compared to an inkjet printer? Lower print quality, uses liquid ink, slower print speed, uses toner cartridges. And the correct answer is uses toner cartridges. As laser printers use toner cartridges and typically offer faster print speeds and higher print quality compared to inkjet printers. And question 30, which of the following is common use for a UPS uninterruptible power supply? Providing backup power during power outage, storing files, encrypting data, managing network traffic. And here correct answer is providing backup power during power outage. A UPS provides backup power to keep devices running during power outage, preventing data loss and hardware damage. And question 31. Which of the following is a characteristic of a virtual private cloud, VPC? Limited to a local network access, requires manual updates, requires physical hardware on site, provides isolated cloud resources within a public cloud. And here correct answer is provides isolated cloud resources within a public cloud. A VPC provides isolated cloud resources within a public cloud offering the benefits of cloud computing with added security and control. And question number 32, which of the following is a common use for a load balancer? Distributing network traffic across multiple servers, blocking malware, managing IP addresses, or encrypting data. And correct answer is distributing network traffic across multiple servers. A load balancer distributes network traffic across multiple servers to ensure optimal performance and reliability. Question number 33, which of the following is a characteristic of a SYN client? High power consumption, operates independently, requires powerful hardware, or relies on a central server for processing. And here correct answer is relies on a central server for processing. As a SYN client relies on a central server for processing and typically has minimal hardware requirements. Question number 34, which of the following is common use for VLAN, Virtual Local Area Network? Encrypting data, blocking malware, segmenting a network into a smaller isolated networks, or managing IP addresses. And here correct answer is segmenting a network into a smaller isolated networks. A VLAN segments a network into smaller isolated networks improving security and network management. Question 35. Which of the following is a characteristic of a mesh network? Single point failure, limited to wired connection, decentralized control and centralized control. And here correct answer is decentralized control. A mesh network has a decentralized control with each node capable of communicating with other nodes, providing redundancy and reliability. And question 36, which of the following is common use for NAS network attached storage device? Running virtual machines, managing network traffic, hosting websites, storing and sharing files over network. And we already had similar question, so which of the following is a common use for NAS, network attached storage device, and obviously it is storing and sharing files over a network. 
a NAS device is used to store and share files over a network providing a centralized data storage. And question number 37, which of the following is a characteristic of a hybrid drive? Requires external power supply, combines SSD and HDD technologies, uses only SSD technology, uses only HDD technology. And correct answer here is combines SSD and HDD technologies. A hybrid drive combines SSD and HDD or solid state drive and HDD hard drive disk technologies to provide both speed and large storage capacity. Question 38, which of the following is primary function of GPU graphics processing unit? Managing network connections, processing graphical data, running virtual machines or storing data. And here correct answer is processing graphical data. As GPU processes graphical data enhancing the performance of visual tasks such as rendering images and videos. And question 39 which of the following is common use for an RG45 connector? Connecting monitor to computer, connecting a keyboard to a computer, connecting printer to a computer and connecting network cables and most likely answer here would be connecting network cables as RJ45 connector is on both sides of all Ethernet network cables and RJ45 connector is commonly used to connect network cables for Ethernet connections question 40 which of the following is a characteristic of a dual channel memory configuration uses two memory modules for increased performance, uses single memory module or requires ECC memory and limited DDR2 RAM. And here correct answer is uses two memory modules for increased performance. As dual channel memory configuration uses two memory modules to increase data transfer rates and improve performance. And question 41, which of the following is the primary purpose of surge protector? Providing backup power, protecting devices from voltage spikes, storing data, managing network traffic. And correct answer here is protecting devices from voltage spikes. As a surge protector protects electronic devices from voltage spikes preventing a damage. And next question, which of the following is a characteristic of hot swappable device? Requires special drivers, limited to internal components, can be installed or removed without powering off the computer, requires the computer to be powered off for installation. And here correct answer is can be installed or removed without powering off the computer. As hot swappable device can be installed or removed without powering off the computer, allowing for easy maintenance and upgrades. And question 43, which of the following is a common use for a docking station? So what you would use docking station for? Connecting multiple monitors to a laptop, running virtual machines, storing data or managing network traffic and here correct answer is connecting multiple monitors to a laptop as a docking station allows a laptop to connect to multiple monitors and other peripherals expanding its functionality and question 44 which of the following is a characteristic of a 64-bit operating system compared to a 32-bit operating system limited to 4 GB of RAM, supports more RAM, lower performance, limited to single core processors. So, correct answer here is supports more RAM. As a 64-bit operating system supports more RAM than 32-bit operating system, allowing for a better performance and multitasking. And which of the following is the primary purpose of thermal printer? Printing high quality photos, printing receipts and labels, printing larger documents and printing in color. 
And here correct answer is printing receipts and labels. As the thermal printers are commonly used to print receipts and labels due to their speed and efficiency. And question 46, which of the following is a characteristic of virtual machine? Requires physical hardware on site? Runs multiple operating systems on a single physical machine? Limited to local network access? Or requires manual updates? And here the correct answer is runs multiple operating systems on a single physical machine. A virtual machine allows multiple operating systems to run on a single physical machine, providing flexibility and resource efficiency. And question 47, which of the following is common use for biometric authentication system? Storing files, verifying user identity using physical characteristics, managing network traffic, encrypting data. And the correct answer is verifying user identity using physical characteristics. As a biometric authentication system verify user identity using physical characteristics such as fingerprints or facial recognition. And question 48, which of the following is a characteristic of a cloud storage? Requires manual updates, requires physical hardware on site, limited to local network access, provides remote access to data over the internet. And the correct answer here is provides remote access to data over the internet. As cloud storage services provides remote access to data over the internet, allowing users to store and retrieve files from anywhere. And question number 49, which of the following is the primary purpose of heatsink? Running virtual machines, dissipating heat from electronic components, managing network connections, storing data and correct answer is obviously dissipating heat from electronic components as heatsink dissipates heat from electronic components preventing overheating and ensuring stable operation and question 50 which of the following is a common use for vpn virtual private network encrypting email messages managing network traffic blocking malware or securing internet connections over public networks? And the correct answer here is securing internet connections over public networks. As a VPN secures internet connections over public networks by encrypting data, ensuring privacy and security. Hello guys and welcome back to TechWolf. In this quiz or test we will be discussing only ports, as ports and protocols are the crucial part which you need to know for your CompTIA Plus Core 1 test if you will know all ports which you will see in this video this means that you are ready to or you will be prepared for your CompTIA plus test as i have gathered all of them in this one test and also if you are interested in my other tests on all different other subjects which i am creating right now i have previously created already on hardware which is a quiz test which is focused only on hardware and hardware troubleshooting which is also a huge topic in CompTIA plus core one test then watch my all quiz quizzes or tests, I will leave a link to a playlist in description and in first pinned comment of this video. So no further ado, let's get into it. So question number one, a security administrator needs to ensure secure a file transfer to an external server. Which protocol and port should be used? TCP443, which is HTTPS, UDP69, which is TFTP, TCP3389, which is RDP, TCP22, which is SFTP, or TCP21, which is FTP. I will not be translating these shortcuts as you should know them also for your CompTIA Plus Core 1 test guys. Also make sure that you know what are the translations for these shortcuts and where exactly and in which type of scenarios they are used. And here the correct answer is SFTP. TCP22 is used by SFTP, Secure File Transfer Protocol, which encrypts file transfers using SSH or Secure Shell. This ensures secure transmission of sensitive data. TCP21 is for basic FTP, which is not secure, 
and TCP443 is for secure web traffic, which is HTTPS or Hypertext Transfer Protocol safe, which is safe hypertransfer protocol, not file transfers, and UDP69 is used for TFTP, which is a basic file transfer protocol but is not secure and TCP3389 is for RDP or Remote Desktop Protocol which is used for remote desktop access. An organization needs to synchronize the time on all network devices with a central time server. Which protocol and port should be allowed? TCP443, UDP53, TCP21, UDP123, and TCP80. And here the correct answer is UDP123. As UDP123 is used by NTP. NTP stands for Network Time Protocol to synchronize time across network devices, ensuring consistent timestamps across systems. And TCP80 is used for web traffic, which is HTTP, not time synchronization. And TCP21 is for FTP file transfers. TCP443 is used for secure web traffic HTTPS and UDP53 is used for DNS queries. A technician is configuring a printer for remote monitoring via SNMP, which port must be allowed on the network. TCP80, UDP123, TCP110, TCP25 or UDP161. And the correct answer here is UDP-161, as UDP-161 or 161 port is used by SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol, which allows network devices, link printers, switches and routers to be monitored remotely. TCP-80 is for web traffic, HTTP, UDP-123 is for NTP, used for time synchronization and TCP 110 is for POP3 or post office protocol for emails used to retrieve email and port TCP 25 is used for sending email via SMTP protocol. A system administrator needs to allow secure remote management of a router. Which port should be enabled for SSH for secure shell? So TCP 443 TCP80, TCP21, TCP22 or TCP23? And here the correct answer is TCP22. As TCP22 is used by Secure Shell or SSH, providing a secure encrypted channel for remote management of devices like routers and switches. TCP23 is used by Telnet, which is not secure, and TCP21 is for FTP file transfers, and TCP443 is for HTTPS used for secure web traffic, and TCP80 is for regular non-secure web traffic HTTP. Which port should be open to allow a secure remote desktop connection to Windows Server? TCP80, TCP22, UDP161, TCP23 or TCP3389. So here the correct answer is TCP3389 as TCP3389 is used by RDP which is Remote Desktop Protocol, which allows users to connect remotely to Windows desktops and servers. TCP22 is for SSH or Secure Shell, mainly used for remote access to Linux Unix systems. And TCP80 is used for web traffic, and TCP23 is used for Telnet, which is not secure. And UDP161 is used for SNMP, not remote desktop connections. Question number 6. A network engineer needs to allow secure email retrieval using IMAP with encryption. Which port should be allowed? TCP110, TCP25, UDP53, TCP993, or port TCP 143. And correct answer here is TCP 993. As TCP 993 is used for IMAP, 
with SSL, TLS encryption, IMAPs providing secure email retrieval over encrypted channels, and TCP-110 is for POP3, another protocol for retrieving email but without encryption, and TCP-25 is for SMTP, which is used for sending email, and TCP-143 is for standard IMAP without encryption, and UDP-53 is for DNS queries. Next question is an email client is unable to download messages from POP3 server. Which port should be checked? TCP25, TCP993, TCP110 and UDP53 or TCP21? And correct answer here is TCP110. As TCP110 is the standard port for POP3 or Post Office protocol which is used to retrieve emails from email server. And TCP25 is used for sending emails via SMTP not receiving. TCP993 is for IMAPs, a different protocol for retrieving emails with encryption. And TCP21 is for FTP or file transfer protocol not email. And UDP53 is for or DNS. A firewall needs to be configured to allow secure web traffic to an e-commerce website, which port should be enabled. TCP443, UDP123, TCP21, TCP80 or TCP3389? And correct answer here is TCP443. As TCP443 is used for HTTPS, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, secure, which encrypts web traffic for secure browsing, commonly used by e-commerce sites or pretty much any websites which we are seeing out there currently are using this protocol if they have in URL HTTPS. And TCP80 is for regular, non-secure web traffic, HTTP, TCP21 is for FTP file transfers, TCP3389 is for RDP, Remote Desktop Protocol, and UDP123 is for NTP, used for time synchronization. As you have probably noticed guys, I have also continuously added these explanations also for incorrect answers. So it helps you to remember all other different protocols also while watching this video. Next question, a technician is configuring a firewall to allow TFTP transfers. Which port should be opened? TCP25, TCP21, UDP69, UDP123 or TCP80? And here correct answer is UDP69, as UDP69 is used by TFTP or Tribal File Transfer Protocol, a simple protocol for transferring files, often used in network environments for tasks like loading configuration files. A TCP21 is for FTP, a more complex file transfer protocol. TCP80 is for HTTP web traffic and TCP25 is used for SMTP sending email or simple mail transfer protocol and UDP123 is for NTP used for time synchronization. A technician needs to configure a server to send out emails securely using SMTP with encryption. So, needs to send emails with SMTP encryption. Which port should be enabled to allow sending out emails with SMTP encryption? TCP25, TCP110, TCP465, UDP53 or TCP993? The correct answer here is TCP465. As TCP465 port is used by SMTP's simple mail transfer protocol secured which encrypts emails sent from a mail server using SSL TLS ensuring secure communication. TCP25 is standard port for SMTP without encryption. So here keep in mind that TCP25 is 
a standard port of SMTP without encryption, which is not encrypted, where TCP 465 is used by SMTPS Simple Mail Transfer Protocol Secure, which encrypts email sent from a mail server using SSL or TLS ensuring secure communication. And TCP 110 is used for POP3 to retrieve emails, not send them. And TCP 993 is for IMAPs, which is used for encrypted email retrieval, not sending. And UDP is for DNS queries. An administrator needs to allow DHCP or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol traffic on a network. Which protocol or port should be permitted? UDP 53, TCP 80, TCP 25, UDP 161 or UDP 67? The correct answer here is UDP 67, as UDP 67 port is used by DHCP or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol for server-to-client communication. DHCP or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol dynamically assigns IP addresses to devices on the network. The server listens on port 67 and the client uses port 68. The use of UDP or user datagram protocol is appropriate since it doesn't require connection, making it faster for the quick transactions DHCP needs. TCP-80 is used for HTTP, the standard protocol for web traffic and is unrelated to IP address assignment. And UDP-53 is used for DNS, domain name system, which resolves domain names to IP addresses and vice versa, not for assigning IP addresses. TCP 25 is used for SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, for sending emails, not managing network addresses. And UDP 161 is used by SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol, for network management and monitoring. Next question, a network manager needs to manage routers securely from a central location. Which protocol should be enabled? FTP, SSH, SNMP, Telnet or DHCP? Correct answer is Secure Shell or SSH. As SSH or Secure Shell uses TCP port 22 and is the protocol of choice for securely managing network devices, such as routers from a remote location. SSH provides encrypted communication, ensuring the integrity and confidentiality of data transmitted between the administrator and the device. It prevents eavesdropping and data tampering during remote management sessions. And next port for Telnet TCP 23, which is next to secure. Here we have Telnet, which is next one, which is port 23, which is unsecure. As you can see here, guys, Telnet TCP 23 also allows remote access, but is insecure because it transmits data, including passwords in plain text. So without encryption and FTP TCP 21 is for transferring files, but is not used for managing devices and DHCP is for assigning IP addresses to devices, not for managing them and SNMP. UDP 161 is used for monitoring and managing devices, but does not offer secure remote administration. Question 13. A user is unable to receive email, but can send messages. Which port should be checked for incoming mail traffic if the user is using POP? Three. So here the question is already giving you the correct answer. It is telling you that it is using POP3. All you need is to know the port and protocol used with POP3. UDP 53, TCP 143, TCP 443, TCP 110 or TCP 25. And for POP3 we are using TCP 110, as POP3 or Post Office Protocol version 3 uses TCP port 110 for retrieving emails from mail server. This protocol downloads the email from the server to the client 
and typically removes it from the server afterward. In this scenario, if the user can send but not receive emails, the issue is likely related to the POP3 port being blocked or misconfigured. Ensuring that port 110 is open on the firewall will allow incoming email traffic to reach the client. And TCP25 is used for sending emails via SMTP, not for receiving them. UDP53 is is used for DNS resolution and TCP443 is used for HTTPS which is for secure web traffic not for email retrieval and TCP143 is for IMAP Internet Message Access Protocol an alternative to POP3 that allows synchronization with the server and next question, which is question 14. A company is implementing a secure website for its customers. Which port should be open to allow HTTPS traffic? UDP 161, TCP 25, or TCP 443, or port TCP 22, or TCP 80? And here the correct answer is TCP443. As HTTPS or Hypertext Transfer Protocol, Secure uses TCP port 443 to provide encrypted communication between a user's browser and the web server. This encryption ensures that sensitive information like login, credentials and credit card details cannot be intercepted by malicious actors. Opening port 443 is essential for secure web traffic, especially for e-commerce sites or any platform requiring user authentication. And TCP80 is used for HTTP which handles unencrypted web traffic. UDP 161 is used by SNMP, a protocol for managing network devices, and TCP 22 is used by SSH or Secure Shell for secure remote administration, and TCP 25 is used by SMTP for sending emails, not web traffic. Question 15. Email messages from a mail server are being rejected as a spam by recipients. Which port should be open for outgoing SMTP traffic? UDP 53, TCP 110, TCP 143, TCP 25 or TCP 21? And correct answer here is TCP 25. As SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol uses TCP port 25 to send emails between mail servers. If emails from your mail server are being rejected, it is critical to ensure that port 25 is open to allow outgoing SMTP traffic to reach its destination. Spam filters often rely on this port for verification, so if the port is closed or blocked, outgoing email may not be delivered or may be flagged as suspicious. And TCP 143 is used for IMAP, an email retrieval protocol. TCP 110 is used for POP3, another email retrieval protocol. TCP 21 is used by FTP, which is for file transfers, not email communication. And UDP 53 is used for DNS, which handles domain name resolution. A network technician needs to ensure DNS traffic can flow between client computers and DNS servers. Which port should be allowed? TCP80, TCP25, UDP53, TCP23 or UDP161? Correct answer here is UDP53. As DNS domain name system uses UDP port 53 to resolve domain names like for example example.com it could be any domain name into ip addresses this service is crucial for network communication as it allows users to access websites by entering domain name instead of numerical IP addresses. Ensuring that UDP 53 is open allows DNS queries to be sent and received, facilitating web browsing and other domain-based services. Where TCP 23 is used by Telnet for remote access, which is insecure and unrelated to DNS, and TCP 8 is used for 
HTTP, which handles web traffic, and UDP 161 is used for SNMP, a protocol for network management, not domain resolution, and TCP 25 is used for SMTP, not DNS traffic. Question 17. A technician needs to transfer files securely between two systems over a network. Which protocol and port should they use? TCP 25. TCP-22, TCP-21, TCP-80 or UDP-69? And the correct answer here is TCP-22. TCP port 22 is used by Secure Shell, which enables secure file transfer through SFTP, Secure File Transfer Protocol, or SCP, Secure Copy Protocol. These protocols encrypt both the data and commands during transfer, making them ideal for scenarios where sensitive data is involved. SFTP and SCP are commonly used to securely copy files between servers or between a server and a client. TCP-21 is used by FTP, which is not secure since it transfers data in plain text, and TCP-80 is used for HTTP, which is for web browsing, not file transfers, and UDP-69 is used for TFTP, Travel File Transfer Protocol, but it is not secure and is used in simple file transfer scenarios. And TCP-25 is used by SMTP, which is for sending emails, not file transfers. A network administrator needs to synchronize time on all network devices. Which port does the NTP service use? UDP-67, UDP-123, TCP-110, TCP 53 or TCP 21 and the correct answer here is UDP 123 as NTP network time protocol uses UDP port 123 to synchronize the time across network devices accurate timekeeping is critical for a variety of network services including log management security protocols and system scheduling by using NTP, devices can be synced to the same time source, preventing issues caused by time discrepancies such as a failed authentication or corrupted logs. TCP-110 is used for POP3 email retrieval. UDP-67 is used by DHCP for server-to-client communication and TCP-21 is for FTP file transfers and TCP-53 is used for DNS not time synchronization. A company wants to monitor and manage network devices such as switches and routers. Which protocol and port should they configure? TCP-23, UDP-161, TCP-80, TCP-443 or TCP-21? And correct answer here is UDP-161. As SNMP or Simple Network Management Protocol uses UDP port 161 and is designed for monitoring and managing network devices such as routers, switches and servers. SNMP collects and organizes information about network devices and can also be used to configure and manage these devices remotely. This is especially important in large networks where manual device management would be inefficient. TCP-80 is for HTTP web traffic and is unrelated to network management. TCP-443 is for HTTPS and used for secure web traffic. And TCP-23 is for Telnet, which allows remote access but is insecure. TCP-21 is used by FTP for file transfers. A system administrator needs to remotely administer several Linux servers securely. Which protocol should be enabled on firewall? TCP-21, TCP-22, UDP-69, TCP-80 or TCP-23? The correct answer here is TCP-22. As SSH Secure Shell uses TCP 
port 22, as SSH secure shell uses TCP port 22 and is the most widely used protocol for secure remote administration of Linux and other Unix based servers. SSH encrypts the entire session including user credentials and commands, ensuring that the sensitive data is not exposed over the network. It is highly secure and prevents eavesdropping which makes it essential for remote system management. Telnet TCP23 is an older protocol for remote access that is insecure because it transmits data in plain text and UDP69 is used by TFTP which is not used for remote server management and TCP80 is used for HTTP web traffic and TCP21 is used for FTP file transfers not server administration. Question number 21. A network technician needs to set up a web server to allow regular HTTP traffic which port should be opened. TCP22, UDP69, UDP123, TCP80 or TCP443. The correct answer here is TCP80. As TCP port 80 is used for regular non-secure HTTP traffic. It allows users to browse websites over the internet. And TCP 443 is used for HTTPS which is a secure web traffic and UDP 69 is used for TFTP Tribal File Transfer Protocol and TCP 22 is used for SSH not for web traffic and UDP 123 is for NTP Network Time Protocol. Next one, technician needs to set up secure communication for email using IMAP which port should be used? So, for IMAP, which port should be used? TCP 110, TCP 25, UDP 161, TCP 80 or TCP 993. And with IMAP we use TCP 993. As TCP 993 is used for secure IMAP, IMAP S, which encrypts email communication using SSL, TLS and TCP25 is for sending emails using SMTP and TCP110 is for POP3, not for IMAP and UDP161 is used for SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol and TCP80 is for HTTP traffic. Question number 23 a system administrator is troubleshooting an FTP connection, which port should be verified for basic encrypted FTP traffic. A UDP 123, UDP 161, TCP 443, TCP 22 or TCP 21. And the correct answer here is TCP 21. As TCP21 port is used for basic unencrypted FTP file transfer protocol, which is used for transferring files between devices, and TCP22 is used for SSH, not for FTP, and UDP161 is used for SNMP, and TCP443 is used for secure web traffic HTTPS, and UDP123 is for NTP. Next question, a network engineer needs to enable encrypted remote access to a Linux server. Which protocol should be enabled? Telnet, RDP, DNS, SSH or FTP? And here the correct answer is SSH. As SSH Secure Shell uses TCP port 22 to securely administer servers remotely, providing encryption for all traffic. And Telnet TCP 23 is insecure and transmits data in plain text. FTP TCP 21 is for file transfers, not remote access. And RDP Remote Desktop Protocol TCP 3389 is used for remote desktop access, typically on Windows. And DNS UDP 53 resolves domain names to IP addresses. Question 25. Which port should be allowed for secure outgoing email traffic using SMTP over SSL TLS? UDP 53, TCP 25, TCP 143, TCP 465 or TCP 110. 
and correct answer here is TCP 465 as TCP 465 is used for secure SMTP, SMTPS with TSSL, TLS encryption and TCP 25 is used for sending email over SMTP without encryption and TCP 143 is for IMAP used to retrieve email not to send it and TCP 110 is for POP3 also for retrieving email and UDP 53 is for DMP. DNS. A technician is configuring a firewall to allow outgoing DNS queries from a client computer. Which port should be opened? UDP 53, TCP 25, TCP 80, TCP 443, UDP 69. And the correct answer here is UDP 53. As port UDP 53 is used by DNS domain name system for resolving domain names to IP addresses. This allows devices to find websites and servers by name. TCP 80 is used for HTTP, not DNS. And TCP 25 is for SMTP, email traffic. And UDP 69 is for TFTP. And TCP443 is for HTTPS. Which port should be allowed on a firewall to ensure that RDP connections to a window server are possible? TCP80, UDP161, TCP21, TCP3389 or TCP22? And here correct answer is TCP 3389 as TCP 3389 is used by RDP remote desktop protocol for remote access to Windows desktops and servers. TCP 22 is used for SSH which is manually used for Linux servers. TCP 80 is for HTTP, UDP 161 is for SNMP and TCP 21 is for FTP or file transfer protocol. Which port is used for encrypting IMAP email retrieval? TCP 143, TCP 25, TCP 993, UDP 53 or TCP 110? And the correct answer here is nine, TCP 993. As TCP 993 is used for IMAP with SSL TLS encryption commonly known as IMAPs. And TCP 143 is used for regular IMAP without encryption. And TCP 110 is for POP3. Another protocol for retrieving email and UDP 53 is for DNS and TCP 25 is for SMTP which is used for sending email. And question number 29. A user reports that their FTP connection is failing. Which port is likely being blocked? TCP 22, UDP 69, TCP 443, TCP 21, or TCP 23 and the correct answer here is TCP 21 as this is related to FTP as TCP 21 is the standard port for FTP file transfer protocol used to upload and download files between systems TCP 22 is for SSH not FTP and TCP 23 for Telnet and UDP 69 is for TFTP and TCP443 is for HTTPS. Question number 30. An administrator is troubleshooting issues with DNS server. Which port should be checked to ensure DNS queries are not blocked? TCP443, UDP123, TCP25, UDP53 or TCP80? Here the correct answer is UDP53. As UDP 53 is used for DNS domain name system, queries allowing clients to resolve domain names into IP addresses. And TCP 80 is for HTTP traffic, 
TCP443 is for HTTPS secure web traffic and UDP123 is used by NTP for time synchronization and TCP25 is for SMTP. Question number 31. An email server is having issues sending email. Which port should be checked for outgoing SMTP traffic? TCP25, UDP53, TCP 143, TCP 21 or TCP 110? The correct answer here is TCP 25. As TCP 25 is used by SMTP simple mail transfer protocol for sending email between servers and TCP 110 is for POP3 which is used to retrieve email and TCP143 is for IMAP, another email retrieval protocol, and TCP21 is for FTP, or file transfer protocol, and UDP53 is for DNS or domain name system. Technician is configuring secure email traffic using POP3 with SSL TLS, which port should be used? TCP25, port TCP143, TCP 110, TCP 995 or UDP 53. The correct answer here is TCP 995. As TCP 995 is used for secure POP3, POP3 S or POP3 S, S stands for secure with SSL TLS encryption. TCP 110 is for regular unencrypted POP3 and TCP 143 is for IMAP not POP3 and TCP 25 is for SMTP which is for sending email not for receiving emails and UDP 53 is for DNS. Which port does Telnet use for remote and non-secure communication? TCP 25, TCP 23, TCP 22, TCP 443 or UDP 69? The correct answer here is TCP 23. As TCP 23 is used for Telnet which allows non-encrypted remote communication making it insecure for most environments. TCP 22 is used for SSH which is secure communication and TCP 443 is for HTTPS and UDP 69 is for TFTP and TCP 25 is for SMTP. And question number 34. Which port is used by SNMP for monitoring and managing network devices? UDP 161, TCP 443, UDP 69, TCP 80 or TCP 21. The correct answer here is UDP 161. As UDP 161 is used by SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol, for monitoring and managing network devices such as routers and switches. TCP 21 is for FTP, TCP 80 is for HTTP, TCP 443 is for HTTPS and UDP 69 is for TFT. Question number 35. A technician is setting up a secure FTP connection. Which port should be used for SFTP? TCP443, UDP69, UDP161, TCP22 or TCP21? The correct answer here is TCP22. As TCP22 is used by SFTP, Secure File Transfer Protocol, which is based on SSH and provides secure file transfer. TCP21 is for basic FTP, which is not secure. UDP161 is for SNMP and TCP443 is for HTTPS and UDP69 is for TFTP. Which port is commonly used for email retrieval via IMAP without encryption? TCP25, UDP123, TCP143, TCP21 or TCP110? The correct answer here is TCP143. 
STCP-143 is used for IMAP Internet Message Access Protocol, which allows email retrieval without encryption, and TCP-110 is for POP3, not IMAP, TCP-25 is for SMTP, TCP-21 is for FTP, and UDP-123 is for NTP, Network Time Protocol. And question number 37. Which port is used for secure web traffic via HTTPS? TCP-80, TCP-443, TCP-23, UDP-123 or UDP-161? The correct answer here is TCP-443. As TCP-443 is used for HTTPS Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, which encrypts web traffic using SSL, TLS, and TCP-80 is used for non-secure HTTP traffic. TCP-23 is for Telnet, UDP-161 is for SNMP, and UDP-123 is for NTP. A network administrator needs to configure a router for remote management over secure channel. Which port should be enabled? UDP-161, TCP-443, TCP-23, TCP-22 or TCP-80? The correct answer here is TCP-22. As TCP-22 is used by SSH, which provides a secure channel for remote management, and TCP-23 is for Telnet, which is not secure, and TCP-443 is for HTTPS, not for router management, and UDP-161 is for SNMP, and TCP-80 is for HTTP. Which port does NTP use to synchronize time across network devices? TCP-25 or port TCP-443, TCP-21, UDP-161, or UDP-123? The correct answer here is UDP-123. UDP-123 is used by NTP, Network Time Protocol, to synchronize time across network devices. As TCP-443 is for HTTPS, TCP-21 is for FTP, UDP-161 is for SNMP, and TCP-25 is for SMTP. And question number 40. A technician needs to configure firewall to allow TFTP traffic. Which port should be open? UDP-69, TCP-80, TCP-21, TCP-25, or UDP-53? The correct answer here is UDP-69. UDP-69 is used by TFTP, Tribal File Transfer Protocol, simplified version of FTP that uses UDP for file transfers, and TCP-21 is for standard FTP, UDP-53 is for DNS, TCP-25 is for SMTP, and TCP-80 is for HTTP. A web developer needs to enable secure communication for an internal website. Which port should be open for HTTPS traffic? TCP-21, TCP-80, TCP-443, TCP-22 or UDP-53? And here the correct answer is TCP-443, as it says HTTPS. TCP-443 is used for HTTPS Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, which encrypts web traffic to secure the connection between the client and the server. TCP-80 is for regular, non-secure web traffic HTTP. TCP-22 is for SSH, Secure Remote Access, not traffic. UDP-53 is used for DNS queries. And TCP-21 is used for FTP file transfers. The next question is technician is setting up a VoIP or voice over IP phone system for a company. Which port must be open to allow SIP session initiation protocol traffic? TCP443, TCP110, UDP5060, TCP25 or UDP123? The correct answer here is UDP5060. 
as UDP 5060 is used for SIP or Session Initiation Protocol, which is commonly used in VoIP or Voice over IP systems for initiating, maintaining and terminating voice calls. TCP 25 is used for SMTP, which is for sending email. UDP 123 is for NTP, time synchronization, TCP 443 is for HTTPS and TCP 110 is for POP3 email retrieval. And question number 43. A network administrator needs to configure a firewall to allow incoming DNS requests. Which port should be opened? UDP 69, TCP 80, UDP 53, TCP 25 or TCP 22? The correct answer here is UDP 53. As UDP 53 is used for DNS domain name system which resolves domain names into IP addresses. This is required for internet browsing. TCP 25 is for SMTP, sending email. TCP 80 is for regular HTTP traffic. UDP 69 is for TFTP, file transfers. TCP 22 is for SSH secure remote access. The system administrator needs to allow secure file transfers to a Linux server, which port and protocol should be enabled. TCP 3389, TCP 23, TCP 443, TCP 21 or TCP 22. The correct answer here is TCP 22. As TCP 22 is used for SFTP secure file transfer protocol which is based on SSH and provides encrypted file transfers. And TCP 21 is for FTP or file transfer protocol or file transfers which is unencrypted. And TCP 23 is used by Telnet which is not secure and transmits data in plain text. And TCP 3389 is used for RDP remote desktop protocol. And TCP 443 is for HTTPS used for secure web traffic. Question number 45. A remote worker needs to connect to a company's internal network securely. Which protocol and port should be used for VPN or virtual private network access? UDP 1194, UDP 53, TCP 23, TCP 80 or TCP 21? And correct answer here is 1190. For open VPN. Open VPN. As UDP 1194 is the default port for open VPN, a widely used protocol for establishing secure VPN virtual private network connections. TCP 21 is for FTP file transfer protocol, TCP 23 is for Telnet which is insecure file transfer protocol, UDP 53 is for DNS and TCP 80 is for HTTP web traffic. And question 46. A network administrator is troubleshooting a TFTP server. Which port should be verified for file transfers? TCP 21, UDP 69, TCP 443, UDP 161 or TCP 3389? And the correct answer here is the UDP 69. As UDP 69 is used by TFTP, Tribal File Transfer Protocol, a simple protocol for transferring files, often used for network booting or transferring configuration files. And TCP 21 is for FTP or File Transfer Protocol, a more robust file transfer protocol. UDP 161 is for SNMP, used for network monitoring. TCP 443 is for HTTPS and TCP 3389 is for RDP or Remote Desktop Protocol. An email server is failing to send messages to external domains. Which port should be checked for outgoing SMTP traffic? TCP 21, TCP 110, UDP 123, TCP 25, or TCP 143? And correct answer here is TCP 25, as this is for sending email. 
TCP25 is the standard port for SMTP, simple mail transfer protocol, which is used for sending email from a mail server to external domains. TCP110 is for POP3, which retrieves emails. TCP143 is for IMAP, another email retrieval protocol. TCP21 is for FTP or file transfers. UDP123 is for NTP, time synchronization. And next question, a technician needs to enable secure email retrieval using POP3 with SSL TLS encryption. Which port should be opened? UDP53, TCP143, TCP995, TCP110 or port TCP25? The correct answer here is TCP995. As TCP995 is used for POP3, S or SECURE, where S stands for SECURE, which provides encrypted email retrieval using SSL TLS. And TCP110 is for unencrypted POP3 emails, and TCP25 is for SMTP, used for sending email. And TCP143 is for IMAP, another email retrieval protocol, and UDP53 is for DNS. And question 49, a user needs to access their company's webmail securely from a browser. Which port should be allowed? TCP443, TCP110, UDP123, TCP80 or TCP25? A correct answer here is TCP443. As TCP443 is used for HTTPS, which secures web traffic using SSL TLS, making it ideal for accessing webmail securely. And TCP port 80 is for regular, non secure web traffic, HTTP. And TCP25 is used for SMTP, which is for sending email, not accessing webmail. And UDP123 is for NTP, used for time synchronization. And TCP110 is for POP3 email retrieval. And next question, a technician is setting up an SNMP trap to monitor network devices. Which port should be verified for SNMP traps to work? TCP21, TCP80, UDP162, UDP161 or TCP22? The correct answer here is UDP 162, as UDP 162 is used for SNMP traps, which are alerts sent from network devices to management stations, and UDP 161 is used for SNMP queries and responses, but not for traps, and TCP 80 is for HTTP, and TCP 22 is for SSH and Secure Remote Access Protocol, TCP 21 is for FTP. So yes guys, this is it for this test, for this quiz, and if you found this useful, leave a like, share this video, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and if you are interested in more quizzes on more different subjects, find the link in the description and in first pinned comment of this video. And see you in the next one.